Okay, so let's continue pushing our table forward some. Between the break, I uh, I just added in one glow effect, and you can see it on and off uh, to the uh, kind of the outer table. And let me fold that up so you can see that uh, here's what's going on with it. Uh, it has a pretty high strength to it, but uh, the key thing is that it's it's an inner glow, not an outer glow. And uh, all I've done then is basically just made a kind of black outline around uh, the outside of the table. And I think I trimmed just a little bit off from the bottom. Okay, so uh, I've got another image we can drop in here. And by the way, I did uh, stop using that starting assets for, uh, file so we can actually name this something other than that. Uh, so we're, what we're gonna do is uh, th just kind of add some more organic stuff to this. Uh, I wanna kind of ra keep raising the table up a bit. Uh, make it feel more dimensional and uh, with that let's uh, let's put a tree in there and uh, once we get one we can probably make uh, quite a few from that and let's get the library into view to find this guy that's a screenshot we'll use later here we go and I'll make sure that these are all in the starting assets uh, file so you can pull them out of there so let's pick on this little bush right here and obviously you can see I relied on the uh, a map app to uh, pull this out of. Uh, we don't need all this image. I think we're just going to work with uh, one of these little bushes. And uh, well, maybe if we need more, we can get it. But uh, let's uh, let's hit F8 on this. We'll just call this uh, a bush or tree, whatever. And uh, then let's double click inside of there so we can edit within the symbol. And let's grab the uh, the paintbrush tool or just the brush tool. Might be a little bit easier. This is a, a newer uh, option, so let's just go with the older one. Uh, all we're going to do is just kind of uh, kind of run along here and, and basically, I don't want to say crop out uh, the bush, but we'll we'll make a, a fill area ultimately that we can use to mask it. And if you want to zoom in even further, that might help you a bit. So let's uh, get a nice solid color that's not uh, semi-transparent. And again, just working on top of this. And I don't think you need any sort of fancy tools to make this happen. I'm just uh, using my finger with the touchpad. Just kind of running along here. You don't have to really even be exact about it. Just uh, and look, we'll even kind of go into that other bush a little bit. And there we go. I might even make it a little less pointy on the top. Uh, once you've done that, just fill that in and then you can mask it. Now let's come back out here. Zoom out a bit. Okay. And let's uh let's add some of the same uh, uh, kind of uh, glow or slash shadowing that we had uh for the walls. So if you want to just kind of start with that as your baseline, go over here to copy all filters and let's paste that in so you can see the the settings that we have it for it if you want to set it up uh without uh, copying it. And I'm going to put this on top of uh, everything else we've currently got. So this is definitely something you could do uh, in terms of the kit. You could, uh, you know, you could basically just layer anything on top of anything else. That's not a problem. So you could have this kind of extending over the ramp a little bit. And uh, let's also take that same uh, glow that we had over here, which was that inner glow, and apply it to this as well. So it um, get kind of a nice little, almost a... Uh, uh, 2D illustrated effect from that. Uh, copy just the selected filter because we got more than one on that. Oh, no, actually, I'm sorry, I had the wrong one selected. Let's go over and grab this guy. So just copy selected filters. So we just get that one. And let's uh, paste that in and just take a look at the um, where it appears in kind of the, the stacking order over here. So uh, this is the one that we previously had, which ends up getting applied first. So whatever is at the bottom gets applied first. In this case, what we'd want to do is probably drag this one down below that one. It'd be almost be nice if you could name these guys. So, so we've now got our inner glow first, and then the outer glow gets applied second. Doesn't make a huge difference, as I'm sure you just noticed, but uh, in some cases it can. And let's uh, maybe squeeze that in just a little bit. I think that's probably a bit much. Maybe let's try eight and eight. But uh, you can definitely see a noticeable difference, and uh, again, I, I think it, uh, it's kind of like a, almost gives it like a, a 2D shader effect. And uh, now what you could do is kind of make 
different little smaller trees from this one. So for example, I could now take this guy, scale it down a little bit. I'm going to move this pivot point to the, over to there and start kind of stacking these around. And if you kind of don't like the obvious clumpiness of this, there's something really easy you could do, but you could just uh, grab one of them. So for example, take this guy over here. Let's remove the filters that we've got on it and just kind of put that over top. Uh, that alleviates some of it. You could also, you know, just uh, obviously rotate it around. And then it almost seems like it's a little bit more of a, uh, a, a seamless effect. And, you know, this could work for uh, rocks as well, all sorts of stuff. And also, too, you could just go on another layer and kind of paint inside of this, too. So, for example, we could just hit, like sample some of the green that we've got. Let's set the brush size up a bit. And then just kind of go on into the center part. Do something kind of like that. And that might even give you, again, more of that kind of uh, 2D-ish effect. Or the word I'm looking for is when something is 3D and then made uh, to look like it's 2D. And I think I did a little bit too much on that one side. But basically what you end up with is something that uh, it's got some kind of uh, flat tones in there, uh, but then some texturing as well kind of toward the edges. And typically when you see that done, Family Guy's a good example, they do it some of the time, is you, they almost always have that uh, kind of black effect outside, you know, bordering it like a typical 2D cartoon. So I, I don't know if that's the best thing we've got. Uh, well, you know, it's actually not that bad. Another thing you can do is just uh, make it into a symbol and then that way you can uh, do things like take down the alpha on it. So then you get something kind of in between as well. And, you know, as you kind of go through here and you, you make chunks of this that you do like, uh, select them and just kind of merge them together. So you could put, uh, you know, tree mass, whatever it is. And then, you know, go back and kind of break it apart and make new ones. You know, pull this guy over here. And, oh, that's the original. I had the pivot point messed up. I'm trying to get back to that one layer. So I'm just going to cut it off and paste it onto that layer. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do here. Just kind of keep making it smaller and smaller. And again, if you want to rotate these, that's going to convince people <laughs> more so that it's not just the same little chunk of artwork duplicated. And there you go, you got a little something like that happening. Uh, another image that uh, you might have uh, seen in the, uh, the library there was a uh, kind of a water effect. Let's see, is it this one? No, that guy right there. And this could be a fun one to put down maybe at the bottom of the table. So what I'm gonna do is pull this right down to here. And I'm gonna cut it off and put it onto the one of the layers that has the, uh, the table walls. I guess it's this one. And then just arrange it behind what we've currently got. And again, the, I'm using the hotkey for that. If you wanna go the slowest way possible, Believe me, it's really worth learning that hotkey so you can just <laughs> hit it over and over and over again. So, you know, that uh, not only does this add some nice color to the bottom of the scene, but uh, it, uh, it could be, it, it could kind of indicate more that, you know, this is the drain, you don't want to fall into it. And uh, this is, uh, yet another thing, I think it's a good idea to mask. We'll get to use a new tool though, so it'll be worth doing. Uh, let's call this uh, water. And again, as soon as you make something into a symbol, it, it'll automatically automatically goes up to the top and you have to, to send it back down again. Uh, double click inside of here. And uh, again, we're gonna make a mask. So, uh, but this time let's uh, use the pen tool and we're just gonna basically kind of draw points around here. And uh, every time you do that, try to hold down after you make it and then you can curve it like so. Let's see what's happening. And uh, since this is the pen tool, what it does is it 
It's actually making strokes, which are very easy to manipulate after the fact as well. I'm just kind of going up and down here. I'm gonna bend it back around. And I'll show you guys some neat filters that you can add onto this at the end that uh, make it seem like it's kind of uh, embossed into the table. Uh, you know what? I might actually kind of make that more of a straight line at the bottom. Uh, be sure to close it off, and uh, then you're, when you're done, you should be left with something like this. And you can fill it in with any color you want. Get rid of the stroke. We are now going to mask it. So we got something like that happening, which doesn't look that great, right? But uh, watch what we're going to do next. So keep it selected. Uh, go over here. Let me get the library out of the way. And uh, we're going to add uh, quite a few drop shadows, each, each one doing a little something different. So this first one, put that guy in there. Uh, we're going to do an inner shadow. In fact, all of them are going to be inner shadows. Let's take the angle and set it to somewhere around 90. So it's kind of going straight down like that. And I'm going to set the color uh, uh, to uh, white. And then I'm going to take the strength down. OK. And I'm going to take the distance down just a little bit as well. So it's just a slight hinting of a little bit of white uh, toward the edges of it. And then, again, let's put in here another drop shadow. So uh, this one I want to apply after that. So I've just drug it up there so you can see now the bottom most one is that white one to so fold that back up and then this is going to be our, our second one to get applied and it's uh, it's also going to have an angle about 90 let's take the distance oh I've got to make it an inner shadow take the distance out so you can see what's starting to happen over here feels like maybe this is sort of cut into the table itself and uh, let's you know what Let's, not, let's take the, the blurring down. I want this to be kind of a hard effect because I'm going to do another drop shadow that essentially looks more like a shadow uh, and fades out a little bit. So when you have it about here, I think that's good. Uh, we've lost maybe a little bit of our initial drop shadow. So I'm going to bump that up just a tad. So what I'm looking for here is that it almost just sort of seems like this curves down a little bit and you catch a little bit of lighting up at the top. So maybe it was really the strength I should play with, something like that. And you could actually angle it a little bit differently. There we go. So it's not so consistent. So you see you don't see a little bit on that side, but you do on that side. And I think that looks pretty good. And then let's add that uh, final drop shadow. So again, one more drop shadow. Drag it up to the top. So this is the one that's getting applied last. Again, this is going to be an inner shadow. And let's set the angle, bump it out to about here, but then we're going to take our strength down and then our blurring up on it so you can see. Now it's starting to almost look like it, it's, uh, it almost looks like you're seeing through the, the water to, you know, kind of more of an inner cut onto the table. And of course you can play around with the, uh, the angling of it, but uh, Looks pretty good. Let's see how our ball might look. Might seem believable that uh, the ball kind of falls into there. And I mean, you could even <laughs> do something like uh, using uh, you know multiple layers of water. You could duplicate this off and remove all the shadowing, and then take the alpha down. Let's have it kind of seem like if if this was, let's say a layer above what's below, right? I have to kind of move the ball down too. But you get an effect like this happening is the point I'm getting at. So the ball could actually seem like it ends up going under the water, right? So kind of a neat idea maybe. <laughs> you could even kind of rock that back and forth just slightly. That could be something that you do uh, via either just uh, sequential frames uh, animated, or um, or even in the, if you're if you're going to use the kit in Xcode, you could just send this. Uh, you could just animate this on the timeline, go back and forth about five pixels at a time and uh, five points. It would seem like the water's rocking a little bit. So just a, just an idea. And uh, another thing you could do is pull this out of here and just see uh, what happens uh, when you move it around a little bit. Uh, 
one thing that helped us, I think, a little bit with this effect that is that we it was at the bottom of the table, so we're not kind of seeing this bottom part. Uh, if um, if you were going to use this anywhere else, I'd probably suggest putting in that um, like an inner glow, so you always have some thing down here. Probably a little bit, uh, you know, just make it a little bit darker. So let's see, something like. That kind of raises it up off the table. I think what you'd want to do is, which doesn't actually look bad over there, but probably probably set some sort of inner glow in there. So just a bit more of a transition between one texture and another. Generally, I think that's going to look good. And uh, well, one neat thing you could try is just spinning this around and watching what happens to your uh, to your filters and. They look about normal here, but then watch what happens when you get to about right over here. And I've, I've got my eye focused on that part. See, you have to, you have to at that point <laughs> begin to reset them probably a little bit uh, because, well, you're rotating the shape, and obviously now you're making some drastic changes. <laughs> it doesn't look bad though, and that's actually a good. Yeah, it looks like a pretty good effect down at the bottom of the table too, of the of the artwork. So anyway, uh, just an idea, but um, let's see what it would look like underneath our ramp. Yeah, I'd want to probably play with those filters for a while just to get them right. But they do uh, they do look good down here. I might pull that down a little bit. And uh, well, what time? Uh, let's start a new video. So these are kind of consistently say stay at, at around 20 minutes or so. Uh, I want to do not really a ramp, but some sort of raised effect over here. So that's what we're going to begin on uh, in the next video. But uh, yeah, we're chipping away at this table.